hello, people, in this lovely place Don't we do call it. Earth. Don't do that. Like, it's so... In Is the Earth flat? No. <laughs> It's not the NASA. The NASA image of the Earth has actually been photoshopped. Okay. Well, regardless, <laughs> we're actually doing a power ranking of the support role real quick. Power ranking. Don't do it. Stop. Come on. Oh, support down. role. The support mechanics. XD lol. Did you just eat too much candy before you came out here? <laughs> you just strung out on a, like I a sugar high. I ate, ate too much carry potential in my uh, league no, games. No, <laughs> literally, did, you should have seen his ults, man. They're terrible. They but, were not bad. I but, literally carried my team. For the most part, we're doing. We're actually going to be doing a support power ranking, and it ours are pretty decently different, honestly. Honestly, I'm, like ten is not bad, better than one. <laughs> yeah. no, they, no, no, they, that's how this list works. Yeah, but for the most part, I think that it's pretty obvious who the bottom, the bottom, few, like just the bottom person, honestly. But for the most part, the top lane is kind of hard to say. The top, the, the top, like few people are just really hard because I feel like the support role is stacked in an A right now. It's kind of hard to like just say no, this player is better. I think like Before. if you look in terms of, but the, the bottom is not going to compare to the top. Yo, the top or is just the, like, the, the top is stacked. NA has some quality t supports right now, so it's kind of hard to say. So let, let's go. You want to you want to do yours first? Ladies first. Haha, ha, you're funny. Um, I'm actually my number ten is actually going to be big, which is. Mm -hmm. Kind of confusing why it's not his too, but <laughs> big is actually, in my opinion, is the single worst. Like, though I do, though I do think, like, no, I really can't put any good like qualities to it. Like, man, he's just all around a weak player. He's bad at laning. His we, his his inability to like, he's obviously not a shot caller. Like, it just feels it feels like since I don't have an import slot, I gotta take what I can get. But there are some quality supports in the challenger scene, as we've seen from the pick of Azazel. Just seems like a silly thing to just like with a team like optic who seems to be like they have two good players on that thing i think and though they're both in jungle i feel like you could build a team around either dardock or medios and i don't think crown is a terrible I player see, like halfway through the split yeah i don't Thank think you medios yeah. i don't you. think crown is a bad player either and you still have an import slot like i guess you might use it for adc but like still i don't want that I don't, person has to lane with big yeah you, you have to lane with big and all our, like this just does not make sense to me as to why they kept this player like all our, I, I feel like this is gonna be a bad pickup for the most part i feel like this this not even a pickup man he just stayed on the team and it just <laughs> makes no sense man it's just like i i like i like big as a person he seems like a extremely nice guy but he's not he's not worth it. He is definitely number ten, and there's really there's not many good qualities I can say besides he's nice. <laughs> Alright, what's your number ten? My number ten is Vulcan. There's no way some dude out of the challenger scene played two games on LCS stage and looking absolutely atrocious is gonna did. play better than Big. That's sad considering Big has been Big has played LCS all year. He's played on other teams before, but what Big has over him is now if Arrow comes back, Big has inherent synergy with Vulcan. Uh, in biggest inherent synergy with error on the stage, whereas Piglet and Vulcan didn't look that good on stage. They so the problem is their cohesiveness and synergy is not good in Challenger scene. It looked it did not look good. It looked like it was very one sided to one player carrying the other one. And laning with Vulcan, I would probably go outside and slice my wrist. Slice my wrist. But don't say that. You can't. Uh, I would more or less pick Vulcan as number ten because I don't see him doing anything. Better than big, but that's but you guys know my, obviously I know my number nine pick is gonna be big, so it's I I don't think he's gonna really facilitate his team to do anything, like just big at least play playmaking supports. I I, I don't think Vulcan's gonna be able, be able to pull it off. Definitely not on a new team with a bunch of shot callers. He's definitely gonna be the even weakest point of the team, which I think they're gonna probably finish seventh anyway. So, uh, yeah, that my number ten pick is Vulcan. That that he's not finishing over big. Sorry, but big gets. I mean, he's no, number nine's not it's nothing better. Yeah, my number nine is actually gonna be JJ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah JJ, I think he's a good player. I feel like that everything besides besides big, I think all of the rest of the ADC of the supports are actually pretty quality. But I feel, you know what? I feel like I should switch this. But uh, yeah, let me switch this. Oh, sorry <laughs> so i'm actually quality content right there. yeah sorry i was i was switching one of my numbers but uh for the most part i think that jj was good he was good on FlyQuest. i think he was one of the better performing members he, he's going to turn that team around honestly yeah he is i don't deny that but i feel like he's not in in my mind he's not better than the rest of this list 
based purely off the fact that although I do think he looked good, like there is some quality. There's just way better players in the in the support role than him. And then like it's just like just prove their proven capabilities. On top of the fact that although I do think he looked good, he did not. That bot lane still didn't look strong with him and Wild Turtle. It was not one of. Yeah, I don't care how much you try to promote Wild Turtle. That bot lane is not good. It wasn't. It wasn't bad that uh, Wild Turtle's not looking terrible constantly. But the fact is. That bot lane was still a bottom of the half bot. I, th- I still think it's one of the weaker bot lanes in NA. Yeah, even against bot lanes that were struggling, that were worse than them, they still almost lost to them. Yeah, but I'm just, I just feel like although I do th- like, he was he was, he's a good pickup, and I don't think if you're gonna if you're gonna improve FlyQuest, he's still he's solid. He do, you don't need to mess around with him. You need to keep him. He's a, he's not worth an import slot on top of the fact that he's he's proven to work with the uh, the uh, ADC you put around him. So, but all around, I just feel like. If we're gonna go based off of results, and we're gonna base base it off of uh, essentially, what was it called? He's capable. He's capable, and he can he can obviously prove me wrong based off the fact that he just started the league. But just the just the uh, the in his inability to make that a top tier bot lane with an ADC who's not that bad just makes me feel like I should not put him any higher than that. My number nine pick is gonna be big. So any, anything I just said about Vulcan is going to be kind of pretty much set up. It's going to be really fast. It's going to be kind of set up about Big. The only thing Big has over him is that he's played. He has what is technically maybe a better roster, but then that's not even. It's like okay. Big's roster it's, is it's not only going to be dependent. He's, he's only going to get it because I think that if they keep Arrow, because this is only based on who I think they're going to keep. If they, if they keep Arrow... Big will be better than Vulcan because I think that he'll lane better with Arrow than if Big got someone else. So I think that Pig and Vul- Piglet and Vulcan are not going to be a good bot lane. Piglet will, will probably be on his own pretty okay. Vulcan, uh, no. Uh, Big also, he just doesn't excel anywhere. Every, like even shot calling, which JJ does better. On to my number eight pick. <laughs> oh, my no- okay. All right, number eight pick for you. All right, my number eight is it. it ha, mine actually is gonna be Vulcan. Mm. Throughout the entirety of the academy season, him and like, although I don't like to refer to academy because I feel like that's an extremely like bad, like what's it called to go off of. They looked extremely dominant. It wasn't just like a, like for the most part, I won't say they that uh, academy league is a. It's not. It's not a good reference a nice for it. Template. Be, it. No, it's academy league is not a good reference th- because most of the players in there are not looking. They don't look pretty and like decent, but. I think that Vulcan and Piglet were so dominant in the fact that they played, like, how they played in Academy that I feel like that's unignorable. Though I do, did not like their two games. I did not like uh, Piglet and uh, Vulcan's two games on the stage last season. But the, that was already kind of not their fault. They were it, kind of thrown in. They were thrown in on top of the fact that I feel like... he was already going to not make playoffs anyway. It was, like, it was, it was okay. I feel like you don't, you don't put... Like, I feel like Vulcan was not prepared for the stage. I feel like maybe he's gonna, it's gonna take a bit for him to kind of, like, get used to it. But I feel like he has a lot of potential. If you watched his season, I feel like he definitely has the potential to be one of a top, the top tier uh, supports in the league. He looks, he's pretty much solid in every aspect, except, except obviously for shot calling. Because he has, like, he doesn't have enough experience. But I think in the future, he might actually bring himself to be able to. But he's a good play. He's a good playmaker. He's a good supportive ADC. And so essentially, he fills any gap you need him to. So all around, I think he's good. I just don't think he like based off of his recent performances on the stage. I can't put him any higher. My number eight pick is going to be JJ. Bam bam ba boom. You don't gotta make sound effects, man. And I I know he'll be. I will for sure hope. I think he'll be better than uh, the two that I put below him. Based off the quality performance that I, that I seen out of him last year, we saw that they tried out Slu. Was it who was it? Conquan in bot lane, and then once, and when once they picked out JJ, it was a completely different story. He off- offered them a voice on the team. He offered them a decisiveness. People really do underestimate the um, the decisiveness that a certain player can bring you. It looked like their team fighting got a tiny bit better. Their shot calling, from what you can tell, how their movements on the map got a tiny bit better. And I think that overall, I think that this team looks... It's like the team looked way better with JJ. I think that you got to factor in it's that really all it's going to be. 
you know, because he can make the team look better, but himself as a as a and you know a, a support player in terms of like playmaking and what the other better ones bring to the league, I can't put him anything above eighth. But he is better than his ninth and tenth counterparts. So I think when you really look at overall the worst players compared to him, he's better than them. But I think that's at the top, later top of the league. Like he could honestly come in and surprise. I think that's something he could possibly do. But that's just asking too much at that point. So, yeah, that's pr pretty much why I'm gonna put JJ as my number eight pick. Okay, he'll look the team better. He'll he'll definitely be better. But now, like, maybe on a team with everyone speaking English, maybe that might make him be better too. But I'm not gonna put him anything about eighth. That's just too generous. And I feel like during like. Starting at number seven is where I think the top tier. Any like this is where I think that the the most the best quality um supports come in. This is where we NA. disagree a lot, actually. Yeah, this is where we start. Well, we've disagreed on every number so far. Oh yeah. But for the most part, I think this is where we start getting the top tier. Any I'm an ADC. I'm an ADC supports in NA. All right. Like, everything seven and beyond are good. I don't agree with the number seven pick, but I have to, I have to deal with it. Okay, my number seven is gonna be Zazel. Uh, I know top four of world support, best support in the world. Okay, I do think that I do think Zazel's a solid. Like again, I think that everybody seventh and beyond are absolutely incredible. I think they're all good. Oh yeah, the, these the are all, seven and above doesn't mean they're like worse than each other. It's oh, I do. Oh, like, uh, they're definitely. Well, I mean, when you get what, to like top three, maybe that's a seven. Thing. Seven and beyond. Seven, I, seven through four are kind of like. If one performs better than the other, then that might. The thing about it, it. The, if I'm gonna put this on, I think everybody seventh and above are not liabilities in the international scene. So I don't want to take away from any of these people. But not, my number seven has to be Zazel. Um, I'm gonna base it solely off of his. Like honestly, he underperformed at Worlds. He did not look strong at Worlds. I know that's not usually what you want to say. Hey, maybe some people do. He's his rookie year, and that could possibly be true. But I'm gonna go off of basing re, like essentially recency. His worlds didn't look strong. I mean, I feel like, although I did like to see him on, he did play pretty solid for the most part. He he lasted most of the season with Cloud9. Mm -hmm. Like, I did like what he brought to the table. I think he is a great NA, like, young NA talent. But, like, I do not like his ability to play playmaking supports. I don't think it's that solid. I don't think his playmaking abilities are solid. I think that he's a good player. But I feel like he excels at other roles that, like, Cloud9 can provide for him. I feel like the inability to like fully properly utilize this type of support though, which is honestly one of the more important roles a support should take, is just what makes me put him below the rest of them. I think, although I, I again want to say that I think he played pretty solid throughout his entire his rookie year, essentially. Mm. But I do not, I don't like what he, like for the most part he doesn't, although I do think he provides enough for the team and I do think he was not too much of a liability for pretty much essentially the entire season. He is not, he's, he can't possibly, essentially, improve, in my mind, he can't be above the rest of the list based solely off the fact that they just, they, they, the rest of these players all can play playmaking supports. So, mm. what's your number? I hate you. Okay. I think my number seven pick, number seven. Don't do is, that every single number, please. <laughs> is Ha, Hakujo. You get, is, is that funny? You want me to respond to you? Yes. Hakuho there is my go. number seven pick. What would so? Uh, man, I think that he was he's gonna be the most average support you're gonna get off this list. I think that his he's a he would most likely only be a thresh one trick if thresh is allowed. Like he'll definitely probably go for thresh a lot of the times. But after that, uh, I don't know what he'll he uh, other 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 than can provide for his team. That's just at a lower quality caliber than. The other guys, because you factor in with the other guys, not only do the other guys bring you world experience and playing its world class supports at worlds, this guy has not brought you that. So, and even with Zazel, who's not my number seven pick, he came back from worlds, so he's played against a lot better players than Hakuo, so he's gonna know how to deal with that anyway. So, I think that Hakuo is gonna be number seven pick, but I think it's a fine, I think it's an overall, he's the very okay ish player. I don't think he's gonna be better than the, than, than the later half of his, um, uh, LCS com Comadres. Comadres? Are they going to be associates? Are you done? Are they associates? Okay, are you, is, is it my turn? It's colleagues. Okay, there you so, go. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to assume that means he's done, and my number six is actually going to be Hakuo. 
I feel like Hakuo is where this is, like, in terms of what he provides to the team, he's probably one of the better playmaking supports in the league. I think that's probably his best quality. I think he slacks in some of the other aspects. And I think that most of you, and, and I honestly, the thing about it is, I feel like he doesn't shine as well because he cons consistently forces himself to stick with Altec. I mean, not Altec, uh, uh, stupid, what's Apollo. his name? Apollo. Apollo, sorry. But they're a legacy bot lane at this point. Uh, they could be. But <laughs> Apollo is not, is not, like, on it, I feel like he shines more because of the fact that he is in a lane with Hakuo, but Hakuo's... Hakuo is one of the more lane dominant eighty. I feel like in terms of the lane, like who who provides the most lane dominance in the league, he's probably number two right now in my mind in just terms of laning prowess. But I do think he lacks in pretty much every other aspect. But I feel like he provides so much in terms of laning that I can't I can't I can't really put him lower. Like yeah. these these other people that are below him are just not even close to him in, in terms of his. Yeah, there's, a, they're, there's they're not, a pretty big gap between ten through seven. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's there's no uh, inability there's no ability in the rest of them to kind of compete with him in lane, so oh, it's kind of hard. I, I I guess you could throw on Hakuho. He had a better year than the rest of these guys anyway. I he don't finish third. They beat TSM. So I mean, technically, if you want to use that as an aspect, he's. I think he, when, when he was finally put in a pressure situation, it paid off. I these think other guys were put in pre pressure situations that just didn't pay off. Most like we saw big completely collapse against that game they had against TSM. I mean, then we saw like Vulcan literally com collapse on the stage. So like, I, li I think a lot of people like to reference the fact that Haku only played well. They like to reference that most people are referencing his Thresh games against TSM. When no, reality. but they made he made playoffs. He made playoffs a couple times with Envy. Remember? What I'm saying is the fact is he actually he 100 percent plays throughout the entire season. His 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 lane dominance is kind of shown throughout the lane. And I feel like if you want my honest opinion, I don't think Altic is that good of a laner. I don't think Apollo. Altic's... Apollo, man, they just need to switch up their names Neil a little Armstrong, bit. Moon landing is fake. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So, I should probably... But what I'm saying is, I feel like the strong... Like, one of the stronger laners, I do think he lacks in terms of what the others... Like, his... Like, beyond lane dom, I feel like he does lack, uh, like, out of playmaking. I feel like I should... I, I almost put him lower than a... Uh, what's it called? Zazel based purely off the fact that Zazel kind of shines in situations with that, like, like team fighting. Mm -hmm. But I, I just feel like the gap between his team fighting and Zazel's and the delay, the gap is more slightly favored in, uh, in, uh, Hockwell's favor. So I had to give it to him. All right. So my number, okay, so what number am I on? You're on six. My number six is going to be the cute boy, Ole. I think... Olay's pr see the reason I didn't want to see I was gonna actually put Olay below Hakuho, but I couldn't do that based off just the merit of not only has Olay drastically improved throughout the year, he also came back from Worlds. Hakuho did not. You factor in, ha Olay only really messed up playmaking against world class supports, but at least he got the chance to do it against world class supports. So in turns, if you take that, if you take the world experience. Back to America, he's still going to be marginally head and above and shoulders better than a lot of the supports he has. Calgary has to go around, and I think with Deathly, he'll shine a lot more with Deathly than he did Double Lift based off synergy issues. I know he said he's Ole started said he started drinking because of Double Lift. <laughs> I mean, there's some obvious truth to that, but I, there's nothing else more I, I, I can say. He doesn't really shock call, but the playmaking needs to be worked on but i think that's something that can be facilitated with a team that wants to facilitate your play so that's why he's my number six pick i think he's just a little bit more better than hakuo in my own personal opinion so all right my number my, we're at number five now right we're at, my number five is actually going to be ole i think ole struggled last year mostly for the do based off the fact that he put in he essentially put himself in a situation where he's in a lane dominant lane when he's not a lane dominant adc and double is kind of a pushy dude who kind of tried to force him into a situation where we need to we need to kind of push our advantage Though I do, I obviously like a lack of ability to, uh, to kind of like beat somebody in a lane is, is a, de is a definite big problem, but he kind of, he like, if, if he got out of laning slightly ahead, just based off of what double lift provided, he did fine. He's a good, he's a good player. I think most of his, most of his struggles came from a difference in play styles with him and double lift. So I think if we get, if we get rid of the double lift aspect, I think he's going to look really good. I think he's going to come, come back to his, uh. Immortals form, and I think he's he's uh, 100 percent good. More than serviceable as Immortals. Oh, he was looked completely fine. I think he's gonna look a lot better. He's gonna look look like he's worth the import slot once he gets on this team. I can't imagine a situation where he looks bad. <sighs> Number five for me 
is our big bearded um, cook from the land of the cooks. Man, he looks like he's 13 with a gigantic beard, man. But he's so cute. And it's fluffy. just so weird that how does he get the beard? You think he'll love him? Let me put my head in his stomach. Okay, just <laughs> finish, just stop. <laughs> All right, it's going to be Zazel. Uh, not only did he prove that in clutch situations our world, he was okay, uh, he managed to complement Sneaky's play style of just surviving in lane. And even at certain points when Sneaky and him could take advantage of players at certain situations in which matchups they got at Worlds, they did perfectly fine against them. I think that once they got a game plan that worked solely for them, then it worked out just fine. You look at the whole Gambit series they had against a Gambit. Cloud9 had against Gambit in their playing stages. Zazel was one of the reasons why they won that game five through his playmaking ability. I think his playmaking ability is only not getting complimented because I think he might be too fast on the trigger finger. <laughs> to and he's like, hey guys, I'm, I'm gonna make a play. You always hear him in columns going, hey, I'm, I'm gonna make this play, and then you know a lot of people are not following following up on it. So I think that with the added aspect of a team that can be a little bit more grounded w with him this year, he's got a chance to be at Worlds and be groomed ag against world class you know supports like Ming and Tucson. Do you really just bring up Mean first? I'm just kidding. <laughs> mean was the first one you referenced. But yeah, laning ag against Uzi and Ming, I, I think marginally made Sneaky and Zazel better. And I think that laning against Ruler and Core JJ made them better. And then you all factor in, Zazel can take that in, in, into uh, playing with all the other ball lanes they played against. And I think that he showed that uh, with this team, he can be the voice of reason. So he's going to be my number fifth pick. But he's my number fifth pick because I don't think he's going to be better than the other four people. In, what, in terms of what he's going to provide. So, all right. Number number four. Uh, yeah, now we're actually tied. So we can probably go over, over this one together, okay, actually. Our number four is we both picked Biofrost. I mean, I, I did not. I actually I actually wanted to put Zazel uh, above him in terms of last year, but Biofrost has had more to show even when his team was lacking. We okay. saw him come on TSM and can be completely just. I don't know what I saw, but I saw a really, really good player. I just feel like Biofrost was stuck into a situation where his entire team around him was terrible. Maybe mid was pretty confident for the most part. A team of pretty, pretty de like decently fresh people, both of them in the bot lane. That's ridiculous. Like the fact that they show they shined like so up, like just in a lane, in, the in a team. Half of the yeah, map was just not, so yeah, atrocious. yeah. The top of the map was terrible, and they seemed to still be one of the better bot lanes in the name. We saw Biofrost still do the same things he did on TSM, just with Stixie this time. Yeah. And I think Stixie is still a great player too himself, but I feel like for the most part, even even with all the the kind of situations they're thrown in because of their team, I still think they looked incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that Biofrost does everything. I he and he and the added at ad, the added aspect this year of the shot calling when he was able to implement on CLG is only going to make him better. Oh, yeah. on a better team. So now you you get a player that was already proven good, did well on a bad team. Now you throw in the fact that he can shot call now. So. Now you have a well-rounded player. The only reason why it's over Zazel is because the CLG roster, if it gets rumored to get Flaming Power of Evil, it's good. I, I did want to put Zazel above him, but I think that Biofrost will have the better year. But Zazel being number five to four is nothing really that bad in comparison. So yeah, Biofrost is my, my number four pick. I think we'll have a much better year in terms of a team that can complement their bot lane. Because like, rain over. Oh, gosh. Okay. So this is where we kind of differ hard. Mm -hmm. So, his and number three pick. My number three pick is gonna... Dignitas's old ADC. Wait, my number three is not Dignitas's old ADC. What? I'm just kidding. My oh, cool. my number three is gonna be Smoothie. <sighs> well, come on, man. Smoothie's last year didn't look incredible. I feel like he was put in a situation where he couldn't really provide. That's the thing about it is, he, like, he was put into a situation where I think uh, it was unfair to him. He didn't. Like, it was unfair to say, like, all of these things. Like, oh, wow. it's it's He wasn't on a good team this entire year. But I do think, for the most part, even on the team, like, when he was on good teams on Cloud9 and stuff, he looked he didn't look to be on the same form that he usually was. I think based purely off of his legacy, I'm going to have to put him at number three. Because, I, I mean, at his peak, he was the best support in NA. Mm -hmm. And there's no there was no argument. He was the best support, for the most part, throughout his entire career. Like for for the most part, I think he's not like I don't think he's the best ADC of I'm mean, support of all time, but like in NA, but I think he's definitely better than Mad Life, right? Yeah, but for the most part, I think recency. I think he is his career has been so good recently that I can't really put it below that. 
I think that even on I mean, yeah. I mean arguably but, I would say it was Loss's fault. He was not really looking at I don't strong. think Loss was as bad as you're making him out to be, but for the most part I think that I don't think that Smoothie is a bad player. I do I I think he's one of the best he's one of the better playmaking supports. I think he's a great shot caller. I think he's a great all around team fighter. I think there's really not something he lacks in. More so as I saw I two. I think he lacks in after the game is kinda not in his hands. He tends to like not know where to exactly be, but that's that could be with kind of anybody in certain situations. What? I don't know what you like just... certain games where they were winning but not winning. He he wasn't necessarily facilitating the same level of plays that he was before. It's it's more so it's harder to make be a playmaker when you're not ahead. Technically, it's... if you're even, it's harder, even worse because if you mess, it's if you not mess hard. up, then you'll definitely get the lead. If over. you're even at the beginning, no, I know there's there's a big problem. Like it's it's kind of. It's like if you mess up, then you lose. It's not hard, more so as it's uh, dangerous, more so it's risky. I think that Bob Frost, I mean not Bob, uh, Smoothie for the most part, he is a great player. He he d- essentially does whatever you need him to, and he facilitates it. So I think that like there's really nothing you can argue in terms of him not being in the top three, in my opinion. I don't think yeah, there's he can't really be lower than four. He can't be in. He can't be below third. He's one of the best supports in NA. He always has been. He's got accolades of worlds and stuff like that. He's been yeah. in the finals multiple times. Like, I, I don't really base off accolades to be honest. I, I mean, like, like so, some some teammates, even if they make it, will not be in the top seven, like top five for me. All so, right, yeah. my number three pick is going to be Dignitas Old Lady C Core JJ. See, see, this is my issue with a new player like that with double lift. We've seen it, we've seen it work out, but we've seen it work out at certain. T- it's oh god, it's kind of hard to really pick out. Because when is when is the good core JJ, core JJ going to come out? Is it going to come out in playoffs or is it or is it, it going to come out in regular season? I mean, we don't he, even know. If he might be a fantastic support, but will he be a fantastic support on his own without the help of his ADC? That's what you got to factor in too. You also have to factor in that this guy has been played with has played with Ruler, a real actually pretty good ADC for two years. Now he's got to play with Double Lift. I think that he lacks in playmaking, but can do it effectively if it's needed better than his, his other other uh, colleagues but i don't think he's, he can do it better than my other top two for based off what i've seen about like in terms of like recency and if, uh, if, I, if, I, if I and if i go back and look at just how world's form it was i mean uh, you can't really blame the it most it of wasn't the problems, other bot lane but he wasn't really putting in any work the problem was mostly based around top lane and kube extremely underperforming and, and mid lane uh, yeah but if you look at the bot lane of just those two no, he wasn't really providing anything i think he was the second best player on the team the fact when Haru was there too. Yeah, Haru was pretty bearable. I just think that I think the game plan between Double F and Core JJ will will be different enough to, to for that to show in Core JJ. Now Core JJ is a player that can say, "Hey, I'm not going to play the way you want me to play." He might look better than both the two I have at my, my number one spot, but uh, I I wasn't going to put him anything below third. I mean, you just can't. But if I look at him, what like it's really hard. It's not even that he's worse than the other two. It, like on any day, each one of them could outperform each other. But I think that in terms of he he has to lane with someone that has proven that supports this he's been like he's only had like a few supports that have only really really worked out with him for a while and it does change the playstyle of the supports. So I think that I'll I'll put him at my number three to be safe. Okay. So if he is number one, I'll say I'm two spots away. So my number two Number two. <laughs> okay. So my number two is actually gonna be Aphromoo. Aphromoo is hundred percent I think I mean, there's really, like, it's it's not even just lack of weaknesses, more so as he excels extremely, like, within an extreme large amount, it, like, in a lot of aspects. I had a really long, I think like, I really couldn't decide who I was going to put at number one, but for the most part, I put him at number two. I just think he is, he is the best shot-calling support in NA. I think that in terms of just shot-calling, he provides more than any of the other supports with that. I think his playmaking's extremely, like, top-tier. His playmaking is just like one of his better qualities. Mm-hmm. He has one of the best, he, like his his ability to uh, his ability to kind of roam around, like essentially I I like yeah, his ability to roam around the map. His Good vision, uh, holy crap! What's up? Good vision. I don't know, like I don't think his his vision is one of the weaker points in my opinion. I think his vision is definitely a weaker point. His playmaking, but I do think for the like. If you think about what he brings to a team, there's not really anybody in competition in ter- like just in in terms of what he's done throughout his entire career. Like I think that Smoothie obviously has been better at points, but if we're going to talk about just like just in terms of the best ADC of all I mean support of all time from NA, it had like there's no competition it's in. 
It's after move. And on top of recency, like in the spring split, he was the he was pretty much the MVP. Yeah. Like there's there's no like he obviously was the most valued player on his like on his team. Oh, we we, we we should do a, a top ten most valuable players we, we think will be the most valuable players for a spring split. I mean, I guess that's okay. Ooh, content. All right, okay. number two. Oh, wait, I didn't. Oh. Hey, 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 stop rushing me. Hey, be nice. But all around, I think that Afrimu provides a lot for his team. I feel like in terms of just his all around player, I just feel like he's one of the most valuable players in the entire league. He's a pretty much a complete support player. He is, he is. And his ability to shot call is is honestly, it's top tier. Like there, there's few shot calling abilities, in like, I mean, players in the uh, LCS that I'll say... That are actually not LCS, more so is the NA LCS. Uh-huh. That that actually have quality shot calling, and he's definitely one of them. All right. My number two is gonna be uh, Chocolate Shake. No, I'm just kidding. It's gonna be Smoothie. Oh, you, you 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 the tricked him, man. Good job. <laughs> I think so. My number one pick is obviously obvious. He's obviously gonna be really really black. But <laughs> why would you do? Why, man? Smoothie is my number number two pick. <laughs> Be for just a general amount of reasons. I think that on a team like TSM, gosh. See, the problem with TSM is that his shot calling will probably not be valued at all. So we're going to have to take a look at, well, um, what else can Smoothie bring to the table? He brings a diverse champion pool. I think he brings great vision. I think he brings great playmaking. And you factor in, if you're doing all that stuff, will you really have to use your voice? But... If this is, I'm, I'm gonna also try to give them the benefit of the doubt because I think that if if this TSM roster <laughs> can listen to a support player for just once in their entire lifespan of a team, this would be one of the better NA teams. Based off Smoothie was arguably an MVP cali- caliber candidate for seven weeks in spring, and it wasn't even and even after that he still played perfectly fine. So you factor in this guy can be very clutch. He decides where things go on the map. He decides where where things get placed. Vision. He can see where junglers are coming from a mile away. As a lot of times we've seen when he plays, he can he can see where junglers are coming to predict. Oh, this guy's coming. Make a play over here. We saw when the when you you were able to switch the 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 summoner spells between TP and Ignite and Exhaust. We saw he was really really fantastic at that. With the, was it Kleptomancy, right? What's what? that? Klep, uh, where you can switch the summoner spell. No, that's called uh, it's called uh, Unsealed Spellbook. That he was literally one of the best at doing that in the league. So I think that I am taking a big gamble with TSM listening to the shot caller because I know myself that are probably not going to do it. But if you just take him and compare it to literally everybody else, it's just not even close. So, all right. And mine. I mean, are you done right there? All right. I just want to make. Okay. My number one is is going to have to be Core JJ. I feel like. Why are you doing that? Like, that was a big surprise. Oh, my number one. (laughs) You don't got to do that, man. But uh, my number one has to be Core JJ. I feel like for the most part, he feels... Essentially, what he does for this team, he feels in the gaps that are 100% needed. He he replaces... I mean, Ole. Which was was a clear problem. Yeah, Ole was a clear problem last season. But I think that... For the most part, you're you're replacing, like I think what he does is essentially he's you're pairing uh Core JJ up with Double Lift. Double Lift is, is an extremely aggressive, probably the single like most aggressive. I I don't know if that's the truth anymore with Pigway back in the league, but during last split, I'm mean, during last season he was the single most aggressive ADC in the league, and uh, you're pairing one of the one of the best aggressive AD I mean supports in the world, up with him, and I feel like this this combination just it, it's impossible for it not to work out. The lane, the lane pressure exerted from these two has to be immense. I feel like his playmaking is extremely. Like it's a strong. He's a strong playmaking support. Mm-hmm. It's undeniable. Um, I feel like his lane pressure is one of his. It's his best quality. His ability to dominate a lane is with, with a, out a doubt his like strongest suit. Though I think he'd function less. I'm mean, worse on a work a different team. I feel like the combination of the team he's on, on top of the fact of the quality of play he's playing right now, like the quality of what he does. Like his quality, sorry, his qualities as a lane dominant player really just mesh well together. I feel like the he might not be the best support in terms of just like what he like he doesn't shot call, so he's not like he doesn't he doesn't have the same shot calling ability as Afremu, and he doesn't he like like just his inability to speak. No, he speaks English, so there's really nothing I could say besides like the fact that he doesn't shot call as well as Afremu. But for the most part, his ability to dominate a lane is going to pair so well with double lift that I can't imagine this not being the best bot lane. 
can imagine this not being the best support. So, all in all, I can't say anything besides that. Number one. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. Is Afro move for me. I could... We see this guy was just head and shoulders above the best support in the league last year. And have proven it because what he has over them is not only does he have world experience, even from this year, he's got something that not any single one of these guys have. He's got an MVP uh, trophy. which What that means is that basically he was the first support to get it. So that is something that none of these guys have. He's excellent vision warding. You have playmaking supports, which is what he's known for. He has a deep champion pool. This guy will pull out anything. He's the most complete support player. I think that everything those guys don't do, he does. He gives team directions. You can he factor in when he was with Zix, he made up game plans for them to do like crazy level level one strats they can do, dominate lane. Uh, he can more or less carry a bot laner by himself. I don't know if any other laner can do that themselves without ha having the added aspect of just being the better player themselves. I think that Aphromoo brings everything to the table that no other player can. You have world experience, you've had final experience, been to the final multiple times. It's just proven he, he can just take teams and make them great. And I think that with Bang, sky's the limit now. So now he's got a world champion under, under his belt. So it's weird, but I think that they don't even have to, have to, have to communicate well. I think he'll know what Alfred was going to do. And I think that Bang cosplaying as Zaya is going to... I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bang will obviously, if he knows how to remotely speak a decent amount of English instead of... Tung Tong. <laughs> then, Unless you're really racist, today, aren't you? <laughs> then I think that when he's the most complete support player, I think that playmaking, shot calling, game plans, warding, and the fifth plan is leading the team. That's five things. All five flashed. Well, not that's five. And I've named off five things, and now all, all all those players can do. Each one of them can't do one thing. He does all five. So that's my number one pick. I don't think anybody should dis disagree with that. I I disagreed with that. But. But, yep, I think that's. It. I mean, th to be honest, Aphromoo is not a big deal in terms of him being put number one. I do think he's definitely in contention, so I can't really disagree with that. And all obviously, these are all opinions. They are not. Or JJ has a world. He has an M MVP trophy. Which one kind of matters more? Yeah, I. <laughs> not that now you now you putting it based in my favor, but yeah. <laughs> all around, I think that this is all opinions, obviously, and I'd like to see some of your guys' lists because. Some of your guys is and there's like, like one viewer. I'm not, I'm not saying like he can't have bad splits, but it's not as bad as people keep making it out to what? be. Like Afro, he can't have some bad splits. He does, and I think that in terms of who had the worst splits, I think in recency in the top three, I think it was Smoothie. Yeah, and I think that Afro had definitely had the second worst split. Yeah, because people, people always say he's not he's not been as good as he once was. I mean, that's pretty much because he's had lesser quality bot laners, probably. Um, I mean, Cody Sun himself was not that bad. Cody Sun was a really decent support. I mean, ADC, I so... I mean, he, he technically plays a part of ADC. But yeah. But. So that's pretty much it. Make sure you guys... Um, and we're going to do... For my, oh, it's my birthday tomorrow, so we're probably... I'm going to do... We're going to do a Cloud9 special vi vi video for me. He is... And uh, make sure you guys obliterate that like button. Okay. And uh, I'd like to point out, I'm going to put the uh, our, our list in the description. And if you have any disagreements, feel free to... Only if you could disagree, disagree with him, by the way. Yeah. Feel free to put it in the comments. And please tell me that my, my decisions are all right. And like the video, click. Subscribe, click if you have not. And hit the notification bell, ding, so you don't miss a single upload. I just can't stop you, can I? But that's what... We're supposed to have to edit it, but I have to do it myself manually. No one edits. Oh, can you support our Patreon? We're we born. don't have a Patreon. Shut up. 